Hello, I'm Chris Richmond, and today I'm off to St Martin's Church in the village of Hindringham. Right, now as you've probably already guessed, there will be church bells involved, and at Hindringham, hidden away in the tower appears to be five of them, and they have a rather chequered history. The first four bells being cast in 1626, with a fifth treble added in 1770. However, over the course of the last century, the tower became plagued with structural issues and the bells fell silent, ultimately falling into disrepair. But this may be about to change. Normally the tower is kept locked from the public, but today I've been given an extremely rare opportunity to climb up and see the bells because one villager has an ambition to bring back full circle ringing to St Martin's. Right, so Hindringham was about 20 minutes away from me and the person who's in charge of this project is a fellow ringer of mine called Helen and she's already had one structural report back which wasn't too promising but then again they weren't specialist in bell related things so she's managed to sort of arrange to get some money to fund a second inspection and so we're going to find out exactly what it's going to entail. On arrival at St Martin's, the tower is unlocked, but Helen has already stated she won't be joining me in my ascent. It can't be that bad, surely. Can it? Hey, look at this, look. See, there are only a few steps up and you can see already how worn down the step treads are from all the centuries of people walking on them. It's amazing. Aha! This must be the ringing chamber. Ah, yes it is. Look at the state of those ropes. Lovely. Located about halfway up the lofty flint tower, the ringing chamber is still home to a few forlorn bell ropes. I would be very reluctant to grab hold should the ghostly call of a long since past tower captain echo within these walls. Now, poetic as that may be, the bells are still a little way off yet. And to get to the bells, we need to get up there. At the top of the 20-foot ladder is a wooden ledge, which is home to the late 19th century tower clock made by John Smith and Sons. Beyond the clock is another ladder, which leads up to a trapdoor and into the belfry. Ah, the bells. There it is. The state of this place is unreal. This has got to be the worst belfry I've ever been in. They've got their work cut out here. Surrounded by the glorious bells, on initial inspection, it appears that there is very little room to manoeuvre myself without first climbing up onto the bell frame. This is one of the most dangerous places I've been for a while. Now peppered with detritus from generations of nesting birds, the layout of the belfry is interesting. Whilst the four original bells cast in 1626 are laid out in their original timber frame, the later fifth bell was installed above on a second tier. However, the bells appear to be in a worse condition than I imagined. At least one bell is listed as being cracked, and the wooden wheels have all disintegrated beyond repair. At some point, Elecum chiming hammers were installed, meaning the bells could be chimed from the base of the tower, but even that hasn't happened for over 15 years. Today, the only sound that emanates from the belfry is a single clock chime, a large metal hammer rigged up to the tenor bell. 
Right, so it's almost one o'clock, so it'd be rude not to stay and listen to the only bell that chimes in Hindringham at the moment. There, that wasn't too loud. Imagine being up here when they're all full circle ringing. That would be good. However, this visit concludes that the pipe dream of full circle ringing is certainly not going to become a reality overnight. As I descend from the lofty heights of the belfry, amazed at what I've just seen, all we can do now is await the results from the structural engineers to see how this project can progress. Well, that was another interesting afternoon out. Probably one of the most dangerous places I've been for quite a while. I just can't get over the state of those bell wheels. Hopefully the structural engineer's report comes back positive. And I hope Helen achieves getting the bells, or some bells, in that tower ringable. Now for the obligatory closing paragraph. If you enjoy following my quirky, if slightly self-indulgent adventures, please don't forget to like and subscribe. This filmmaking lark just wouldn't be worth it without the support of watchers like you. Until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>